Okay, welcome back. The demo that I'm going to do now is a good physics problem too. It's called speed of, a, of the tip of a rotating ruler or rod. So I have a ruler here that is pivoted about the end. I'm going to take this ruler and then uh, put it in its horizontal position like this. Right, so it's pivoted about the end. Then I'm going to ask what is the speed of the ruler going to be, the tip of the ruler, right? So the V tangential of the tip of the ruler, right? Uh, when the ruler is at the most bottom position, right? So this is a good problem because it can help um, uh, because a lot of theory goes into being able to solve something like this correctly and, can, and it can help test all those theories, right? So how do we answer this theoretically? So if we use uh, the potential energy that it has stored here, it gets converted into kinetic energy, right? So the kinetic energy that a rotating ruler or rod has is only rotational kinetic energy. It doesn't have translational kinetic energy, right? So it has kinetic energy of rotation. So we say the original potential energy is mgh. So the kinetic energy of rotation is one half times the moment of inertia about the pivot point times omega squared, right? Omega final squared. So. In order to measure potential energy, we have to ask this question. Where is the reference point of this ruler with, uh, to measure its potential energy from? The reference point should always be the center of mass of the ruler, the, wherever the center of mass is. So in this case, the ruler I have is a, uniformly, a uniform density ruler, right? So the center of mass would be right here in the middle. So the center of mass at the end is going to be right there, and at the beginning, it was here the center of mass, right? So the center of mass is what matters. So put my xy axis wherever the center of mass is, and then measure the height, measure the original height of the center of mass with respect to the final position of the center of mass, right? So if we call the final position of the center of mass zero, the original height of the center of mass is what? This is L over two, right? It's half the length of the ruler. Right? So then uh, mg, this one is going to be equal to L over 2. Right? L over 2, so that's h, L over 2. Then ask the question, what is the moment of inertia of a rod or ruler that is pivoted about the end? The moment of inertia about an axis going through the end for a ruler or rod of uniform density is 1 third ml squared. Okay? So then we use that moment of inertia one third m l squared omega final squared right so then what do we do we're trying to calculate what the velocity of the tip is but first we have to calculate the final omega the final rotational speed of the ruler right so then the m cancels with the m and then this two cancels with this two the three goes up to the top three g and then the l cancels one of the l's here so you get 3g over l is equal to omega final squared, and then we square root that, right? So the rotational speed of the ruler at its bottom is going to be equal to square root of 3g over l. But now what's going to be the velocity of the tip, right? So now we use the equation v is equal to r omega, right? The pivot point only has rotational speed. The further away you are from the pivot point, right? Objects along a rotating uh, object move faster the further away from their pivot point they are, right? So the tangential velocity increases like this, and then you get like that. So the center of mass is a distance of L over 2 from the pivot point. So its velocity is going to be, uh, the center of mass velocity is going to be L over 2 times the omega, and then omega is going to be square root of 3g over L. Right? But in my case, I'm asking for the velocity of the tip of the ruler. So the tip of the ruler is going to be L times omega. Right? So then it's just going to be V of the tip, L times omega. Right? So then what's going to happen? Well, I can bring the L into the square root. Uh, v of the tip is going to be square root of 3GL. Because L goes into the square root uh, as an L squared, and then cancels out one of the L's uh, in the bottom. So 
uh, V center of mass is going to be one half of square root of 3GL. So whatever the velocity of the tip is, the center of mass is going to be half of that velocity, right? So then I'm going to ask this question. If I take the ruler and I pivot it from another point, I have another point here, and in this case it's the 66 centimeter mark. Then I perform the experiment, right, from the horizontal position. Now what's going to be the velocity of the tip, right? So then the problem becomes more complicated, right? So, so this is going to be the velocity of the tip if it's pivoted about the end, right? So then let's perform the calculations again. So this time, uh, the hole is at the 66 centimeter mark, right? 66 centimeter mark. So then we have here, looks like this. This is a 66 centimeter mark, right? So then it goes like this. Okay, find out where the center of mass is, right? That is our reference point. Center of mass is at the 50 centimeter mark, right? So I put my xy axis at the center of mass, and then where's the center of mass here? The center of mass is over there, right? Uh, so then what is that height from here to here? So then it's gonna be mgh is equal to half i omega final squared, right? So then uh, what is my h? Okay, so my h is gonna be uh, well, if, if, if this is 50 centimeters, and then this is 66 centimeters, right? This is going to be 16 centimeters. So then my H is just 16 centimeters, right? The, the little distance from that hole to the, uh, the center of the ruler, right? So that my H is equal to 16 centimeters, so 0.16 meters, right? And then what's the moment of inertia? Okay, well, the moment of inertia of a rod about any other point other than the center, then we have to use the parallel axis theorem, right? So in this case, the pivot point is at the six, uh, 66 centimeter mark. So what is the, mo uh, the moment of inertia there? So you guys, I of the center of mass plus MD squared is equal to I about the, uh, any axis, right? So. I'm gonna have to take the moment of inertia about the center of mass, then shift it to the 66 centimeter mark, right? What is the moment of inertia about the center of mass? 1 12th ML squared plus MD squared. That gives me the moment of inertia about any axis. So then a 1 12th M, in this case, we have the length of the ruler is one meter, so we just have one squared. And then the distance D from the 50 all the way to there, that's going to be the same thing as the height h, right? That's the distance d of the shift amount. So that's 0.16 squared. Okay? So that's going to be the moment of inertia about the, the 66 centimeter uh, uh, hole, right? So then you have here 112 m1 squared plus m.16 squared, right? And that's what the moment of inertia that I put over here, right? 1 12 m 1 squared plus m 0.16 squared that gives you omega final squared right uh, so then the m's cancel the mass of the ruler cancels so we have here uh two goes over to the top we have here g times 0.32 divided by this gives you 1 12th one squared is just one plus 0.16 squared. That gives you omega final squared. So let's actually come up with numbers. For this one, I calculate its V tip to be what? Well, the length of the ruler is one meter, right? So I just get three times 9.8 square root, right? The ruler is pivoted about its uh, end hole, right? So how about this one? Now let's put here 9.8 right uh, then we're going to take the square root of all of that so we're going to get second that's going to be the rotational speed of the ruler right when it goes to the bottom now what's going to be the velocity of the tip okay then you take the distance of the tip from the pivot point then you multiply it by the omega right in the previous case the distance of the tip from the pivot point was equal to l 
right? So we just multiplied it by L square root of 3G over L, right? So now what, are, what is gonna happen? Velocity of tip is gonna be this distance from the 66 centimeter mark to the bottom, that's gonna be what? Um, and that's actually gonna be 66 centimeters, right? So that is the distance because this is the, up here is the 100 centimeter mark and then down here is the zero centimeter mark, right? So then uh, the distance from the tip to the pivot point is gonna be the uh, 66 centimeters. So that's gonna be 0.66, right? So then you say here R omega 0.66 times omega, which is 5.365 tip. So this is the theoretical answers we're expecting. So it's kind of makes sense because if the ruler is pivoted about the end, the tip is very far away from the end, it should be moving faster, right? If the ruler is pivoted about uh, somewhere other than the end, then it comes down, it should be coming down slower because uh, the, the tip is very close to the, uh, to the pivot point, right? So it does, the answer does make sense. So 3.54 versus 5.42. So now let's actually run the experiment, okay? And then I'm gonna have a digital timer here. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the timer so that it's at the tip of the ruler. The ruler goes, swings through it, that the timer actually does read something. So right now I am blocking the, the, the tip and then here I wanna make sure that the tip of the ruler is flush with the edge of the, the laser beam. The laser beam is like right here, goes like here. So then I'm gonna go like this a little bit. I wanna make, ready, set, go. Okay, run it maybe again, get an average time. So I ran it a couple of times and I'm getting 0 0.0048 seconds, 0 0.0048. So that means when the tip of the ruler is crossing the laser beam, Okay, so the time is about 0 0.0048 seconds. So then the velocity of the tip is gonna be what? Well, as long as I measure the width of the ruler, right? So the width of the ruler is 2.57 centimeters, right? 2.57 centimeters. So it's gonna be the width of the ruler divided by the time. 0.0257 meters, right? Because it was 2.57 centimeters, you go back two spaces, and then you divide that by 0.0048. Let's see what the velocity of the tip is. Okay, my theoretical is 5.42 meters per second. That actually perfectly makes sense because there's also a little bit of friction on the axle here as the ruler is rotating. So the experimental result should always be a bit smaller than the theoretical result because of that friction. So I'm actually within a uh, perfect uh, percent error within my expected result, right? So my percent error is going to be 100% times 5.42 minus 5.35 over 5.42. Okay, 1.3% error. So very, very good result. And that uh, goes through with the one that's rotated around the tip. Now let me adjust the height and do the 66 centimeter mark. Okay. So then it's going to be here. Okay, I will make this go down. I had to place the, my digital timer on some support, raise it up. Right now I'm pivoting the, uh, I'm pivoting it at the 66 centimeter mark. Put it horizontal. Okay, so I'm getting 0 0.0072. Let's run it again. 0 0.0072. So twice the same answer. Okay, so then what's, what is my experimental 0 0.0072? Right, so then we divide this by 0 0.0072. So let's see what our experimental Final velocity is 0 0.0257 divided by 0 0.0072.
3.57. Okay? I am getting 3.57. Well, this one was 3.54. So I'm getting slightly higher than the, the theoretical result, but not significantly. So very, very, very close to the, the theoretical result. So all of these moments of inertia, shifting the moments of inertia, all of these complicated equations, parallel axis theorem, uh, omega one half i omega squared, the v equals r omega, all of those equations can be proven by just simply doing a simple experiment like that, right? So I'm getting 3.57, 3.54, so my, my percent error is gonna be amazing, right? How physics and science and all of these fields come together and help us explain the workings of nature. So that's basically essentially what these are, is uh, equations and theories and formulas that when tested over and over again, yield results as given by nature. And so this is our way of explaining how nature is working. So you can see here how beautifully the two results match each other, right? So you can perform experiments like this, put the pivot point at any point, right? And then try doing a rotating ruler and rod. The other thing you could also try is releasing it other than or horizontal, it release it from some angle and perform the experiment, right? Some random angle. And the equations of that will change slightly, but not too much. And then you can calculate what the predicted angle is and then compare with the experimental result, okay? Thank you very much.